Greetings YouTube viewers and welcome to another video on the Ian Bullock channel. It's August 2024 and I'm recording this video because we've reached a very important milestone here at our home in Norwich, Norfolk in the UK and that is that our little miniature schnauzer Nina is celebrating her 11th birthday. Now that really is a cause for celebration for us here in Norwich because we really never expected Nina to reach such a grand old age. Many of you will know if you follow Facebook and YouTube and other social media that she's had some terrible, terrible health problems during her lifetime and we're amazed that she's managed to get through them all and reach this fantastic age, 11, in August 2024. Now I always like to think of Nina as something of a social media superstar and this began when she was just a few months old when I recorded a video of her for my YouTube channel called Watch Nina Grow which has now had 268,000 views on YouTube and is my second most popular video. Now this showed the transition between her being a furry little three month old puppy and a rather elegant juvenile six month old puppy with lovely dark markings and beautiful fur. Nina seemed absolutely fine and healthy as a puppy but when she was quite young she was diagnosed with a condition called pulmonary or pulmonic stenosis which I think is a constriction in the blood vessel that runs from her heart to her lungs and uh, is therefore a severe heart murmur. She had to undergo surgical procedures with the team at the Queen's Veterinary School Hospital in Cambridge in 2014 and 2016 and she's been under the care of the cardiology team at that hospital ever since with annual checkups. The team at the Queen's Veterinary School Hospital at Cambridge and also Chapelfield Vets Practice here in Norwich have been brilliant with her over the years and have really looked after her well. Unfortunately, Nina was never insured, which was a big mistake on my part. And at the last calculation, I think we've spent something like £20,000 on her various private health treatments over the years. But of course, she's well worth it because she's such a beautiful and sweet natured little dog and we wouldn't have it any other way. So Nina has definitely been through a lot of problems in her lifetime. This video was recorded quite recently in the summer of 2024 on one of our early morning dog walks around Danby Woods on the southern edge of Norwich. Nina can be seen heading towards her 11th birthday still looking pretty sprightly, perky and energetic. She loves her morning walks and meeting all of our doggy and human friends where Nina has become known as quite a little character. I hardly ever have to have her on her lead because she always walks so nicely and stays with me for the whole circuit of the woods and the marshes every morning. Such a good girl. Miniature schnauzers, of course, these days have become quite popular. We got our first one back in 1990 when we lived in Cromer. And back in those days, they seemed quite unusual you hardly ever saw them around. In the 34 years since, we've had four of them. They've all been female, they've all been that grey colour called salt and pepper, and they've all been very, very different characters. We've loved them all, of course. Back in 1990, it was those dark old days before the internet, Google and email, so tracking down a pedigree puppy was that much harder and usually involved lots of phone calls and letter writing. This was our first mini schnauzer. She was called Lottie, and I'm pictured with her here in Cromer, aged about 27. Lottie was a lovely dog, but sadly she died aged only six, having suffered from an undiagnosed problem with kidney stones and bladder problems. It was very sad, and she was very young. Fast forward a good few years and here I am again, this time with our fourth mini schnauzer, Nina. And I'm about 51 in this photo when Nina was still quite young in 2014. 
The two other mini schnauzers that we had here in the Bullock household were Clara, who's pictured here on the right, and little Trudy on the left. These two dogs rubbed along together for many years, and certainly during most of the childhood of our son Greg. We've absolutely loved all four of our mini schnauzers over the years, but they've definitely all had very different personalities. Clara, the one on the right, used to be quite shy and withdrawn and often used to spend time in other rooms, often in the dark, away from the family. As the years went by, however, my wife Julie worked very hard with her and tried to get her to integrate with the rest of the family. Trudy, the little one on the left, she was quite a quiet little girl, very affectionate and just used to follow me around the house all the time and was quite a little lap dog. She was lovely. Here they are again, this time pictured with our son Greg in Dunstan Woods near Norwich when he was younger. Clara on the left and Trudy on the right. Despite her initial problems socialising and being so terribly shy and withdrawn, Clara actually grew in confidence over the years, blossomed and ended up having a long, energetic and happy life, reaching the age of 15 and a half. Trudy, who's pictured here, made it to 16 and a half and had a wonderful life too. Clara and Trudy were a super pair of dogs and brought so much fun, pleasure and happiness to our household. So this YouTube video is essentially a rather random selection of old and new iPhone videos and photos from the family album, which I've stitched together. I do hope they will serve to mark Nina's 11th birthday, demonstrate how much joy she's brought into our world and celebrate her fantastic life to date notwithstanding all its medical complications and challenges. So I know I keep saying it, but Nina has always been such a lovely little dog. Laid back, intelligent, intuitive and mature. She's never been one of those dogs that bombs around the house, smashing into things and making a mess. Neither yappy nor snappy, Nina has simply been happy. Nina seldom barks except when welcoming visitors into our home. She's happy to be stroked, has no issues whatsoever with strangers or children and seemingly loves everyone. Even people who admit they don't really like dogs tell me that they're prepared to make an exception for Nina. They soon warm to her and often start stroking her too. I firmly believe that dogs bring out the best in people. Nina is always calm, chilled, kind, friendly, wise and gentle. She's sweet-natured and affectionate without being overly soppy or leaping up and showering us with slobbery kisses. Nina is definitely one of a kind. We've been so lucky she came into our lives. I've already talked in this video, of course, about Nina's severe heart murmur. The vets warned us many years ago that Nina might well have a very limited lifespan and could even suffer from sudden death, collapsing unexpectedly at any moment. We've always ensured that she's never over-exercised, particularly in hot weather, and have been ever vigilant for heart failure symptoms such as panting, coughing and fainting. These have never happened, thank goodness. So, YouTube viewers... On the subject of not over-exercising Nina, it's really weird that I should have stumbled upon this old video from winter 2013 showing Nina chasing around after Greg at high speed around the field. She was only a few months old back in those days and of course we never realised then that she had a severe heart murmur. It had yet to be diagnosed by the vets. Nina successfully underwent heart surgery with two operations at QVSH Cambridge and after that Nina's health stabilised requiring only annual cardiology reviews every summer. In more recent years however she seems to have gone seriously downhill and worked her way through almost every definition in the dictionary of doggy diseases 
lurching from one medical condition to another. Nina has become almost a celebrity client at the Cambridge Veterinary Hospital and I've sometimes found myself liaising simultaneously with specialists from cardiology, general medicine, surgical and oncology. I've become quite baffled and befuddled with all the scans, the tablets, the blood tests, the urine samples and all the complex medical terminology. Sometimes it all seems like too much. Over the past three or four years, there's hardly a major organ in little Nina's body that hasn't been scanned, queried, tested, scrutinised or reviewed. YouTube subscribers who follow my videos will know that Nina has had repeated problems with lumps and bumps on her skin, warts and growths which our vet suspected were mast cell tumours, skin cancer tumours. With her severe heart murmur, Nina's not supposed to undergo general anaesthetics, but over the course of a couple of years, our poor sweetheart had four separate operations to remove these skin tumours, each bout of surgery seemingly more painful than the last. Nina still has a few small pimples here and there which we monitor, but fortunately the tumours did not spread or require further cancer treatment. Earlier this year, however, Nina suddenly suffered two very unpleasant urinary tract infections and was extremely poorly for a few weeks. If I'm honest, I thought back then that she was going to die. Hurrah for antibiotics. There has been talk on and off of pancreatitis. Lesions on her liver and spleen have been scanned and checked. Her cholesterol has been too high. Her blood pressure has been too high too. Cushing's disease has been mentioned a few times as a possibility, but we've yet to even go down that road. More recently, Nina's kidneys have been the main and most serious focus. They're not functioning properly, and she's expelling too much protein in her urine. That's what the vets tell me. Renal failure, sadly, will be the biggest health problem for Nina now, going forward. Whereas humans can be offered kidney transplants, dogs do not have that option. Their kidney conditions can only be managed through diet and medication, which is exactly what we're doing with Nina. She now takes three types of medication daily, tablets to support her kidneys, anticoagulants to prevent blood clots and anti-seizure drugs to reduce the risk of having fits. I'll talk about that problem shortly. So here is our lovely Nina in August 2024, aged 11, and uh, she's just chilling out on the bed at the moment eating some kibble. But uh, one of the things that you might have noticed about Nina in this video compared to some of my previous videos is that she looks a little bit different. Uh, now, one of the reasons for this is because her beard here, you can see um, we're keeping that cut quite short at the moment because Nina has started preferring to eat some of her food soaked in water, like a kind of soupy water. And uh, her beard was getting in a right old mess. So really, for the sake of practicality and making everyone's life easier, uh, we're keeping the beard cut short. Plus, she's also been groomed recently, so her hair is quite short anyway. So the other thing that you might have noticed about Nina is that she's lost quite a lot of weight compared to her previous videos. And uh, what happened was a few years ago, she had gained really too much weight. And because of her heart and various other health issues, the vets at Cambridge told me that we should put her onto a low fat diet and try to cut out treats. So we did that really for the sake of her health. And, um, and gradually, bit by bit, the weight did start to come off, but probably not fast enough. And then uh, all of a sudden, she did lose quite a lot of weight. And uh, just as I was celebrating the fact that the diet was finally working, of course, the vets in Cambridge told me that they were worried that there might be some kind of a, a more sinister reason medically uh, why that she was experiencing this very rapid weight loss. And uh, yeah, she's lost about three kilograms from 10.85 
to about eight kilograms. So yeah, three kilograms have gone really over the past couple of years, I should imagine. I'm afraid as things stand with Nina, you know, she's suffering from this kidney problem, kidney disease, renal failure, I suppose, by any other name. And, uh, you know, I just don't really know how much longer she's going to go on for. And I suppose I'm old enough and grown up enough now to know that uh, we're not going to have her forever. I don't know how many more YouTube videos of her I'll make. But uh, obviously it's great that she's got to 11. If she can get to 12, we might well do another YouTube video. But uh, I was talking to someone the other day and saying this is really the problem that we have with dogs is, you know, you take them into your home and... They bring such uh, love into the household and you love them as best you can, look after them. But there's always that inevitable heartbreak, isn't there? When uh, they get to sort of 12, 13, 14, whatever, you know that you're going to lose them. And um, you love them, you lose them, you're heartbroken. And that really comes with the territory with owning a dog. So some people I know, uh, they don't actually, they've never had dogs because they just can't bear the idea of that inevitability that uh, there's going to be a sort of tragedy in the house, a bit like losing teenage children. But um, yeah, I don't want to sound too gloomy, but um, obviously the fact that Nina is still going is great. And um, I'll update you in the comments below and the uh, caption for this YouTube video uh, in the future to give you updates on her health. But at the moment, you know, she's 11 and um, that's good. That is some good news here in August 2024. Actually, just when we thought that Nina's health problems couldn't get any worse, back in the, uh, around about the start of July 2024, um, she started developing from absolutely nowhere fits or seizures. And uh, this came as quite a surprise to us, really. It just kind of happened um, completely by surprise. And uh, what I'm going to do now, actually, I don't want to seem too gratuitous, but I'm just going to edit in a little bit of footage that I took really for the sake of the vet um, when Nina was having one of her seizures in early July. Uh, I suppose if for no other reason to show other miniature schnauzer owners what, um, what it's like when it happens. Initially, I thought she was having a heart attack actually. She was, uh, she was on this bed and just started what I thought was a kind of bad dream and she seemed to get worse and worse and worse. And um, she was having a fit and then she had several fits. So this is a bit of a trigger warning now. If you don't want to see Nina ill, then um, please fast forward or something now. But I'll pop that in and then I'll uh, talk to you a little bit about it uh, as the uh, as the video is going on. So this was July the 17th and uh, this was the 6th seizure or fit which Nina had experienced. Um, these fits usually began with her kind of drooling and dribbling and licking her lips in a rather strange way and then trembling a lot as well. She then rolled onto her side and started really just thrashing and thrashing away completely out of it as far as I could see. I don't think she knew what was going on and what I'm trying to do here in this video, probably not very well, is to stroke her and talk to her, keep the curtains closed and try and make the room as relaxing as possible just to get her through the seizure as best I could and out the other side. And the reason I videoed this was so that I could send the little video clip to our vet and the vet could share it online with her colleagues in neurology and uh, Nina has since been put onto some anti-seizure medication. This was uh, July the 17th, so six weeks ago, since she had the last seizure. And uh, we're hoping that we've now moved on from that. No one's quite sure what caused it, but uh, we're glad that those seizures seem to be behind us at the moment. Yeah, so that was it, folks, really. Uh, scary stuff, isn't it, when that happens? Um, but fortunately, she had two or three days of fitting and um, she's now on some anti-seizure medication, which seems to be working. And uh, we'll have to hope going forward that uh, those fits are behind us. As I record this, it's six weeks since Nina had her last fit. 
and uh, so we're hoping that uh, we can keep those at bay really. Um, but yeah, so we're doing what we can with Nina. We've always um, tried to look after her from a health perspective. All of her problems, we've uh, been to the vet as soon as we can. And uh, as I say, she's not been insured. So every time we go, it's kind of hundreds and hundreds or thousands of pounds. But we've always done what we can. And uh, she's just been the most fantastic dog. Whether we'll have another Nina in the future or a dog as lovely as Nina remains to be seen. But uh, we're doing what we can with her. And as I say, I don't want to sound too much like doom and gloom. But um, yeah, just a lovely, lovely dog. And um, one of the best, I think, for us here in, um, here in the Bullock household in Norwich. So that's it really, YouTube viewers from Ian Bullock and Nina here in Norwich, Norfolk, United Kingdom. Thank you so much for watching this video and Nina's other videos and following all her ups and downs and highs and lows and medical problems over the years. And we'll keep everyone posted. And uh, happy birthday, Nina. Happy 11th birthday from everyone. And uh, yeah, sending best wishes to all YouTube viewers and miniature schnauzer owners around the world. Goodbye and thank you.